What is up, everybody? It is JT Sports. I am back to you guys with another episode of the JT Sports Podcast. And on this episode, I'm here with my week four college football reactions and takeaways. Going to give you guys some of my thoughts for some of the things that happened in college football this past weekend. I'm going to be talking about Arkansas. They got a big victory over Texas A&M. What's wrong with Clemson? Clemson suffered an upset loss to nc state what's going on with them and lastly is oklahoma overrated going to be talking about that but before we get into it if this is your first time tuning in to the jt sports podcast welcome make sure that you follow me on my social media pages my instagram and twitter is both at jt sports underscore once again you can follow me on instagram and twitter at jt sports underscore and lastly make sure that you are subscribed to my youtube channel which is jt sports so arkansas moves to four and oh on the year they got a big win over texas and them 20 to 10 and they have a big matchup against georgia this upcoming weekend i'm going to be touching on that later on this week but i mean listen Everything that I've been saying about Arkansas, even before the season began, is that Arkansas is going to be the second best team in the SEC West. And a couple of months ago when I said that, before the season kicked off, everybody was calling me crazy, saying that, you know, Arkansas is going to be solid, but they're not going to be the best team in the SEC West or the second best team in the SEC West behind Alabama. But now people are starting to come around and they're starting to realize just how good this Arkansas team is, okay? You have a very good quarterback in K.J. Jefferson. You are really good up front on both sides of the football. When it comes to your offensive line, you have the best offensive line in the SEC. And you have one of the best defensive lines in the SEC as well. And you have a killer group of running backs And a really good coaching staff. And Sam Pittman has done an incredible job with this program. And I continue to bang on Arkansas every week. This is my temporary football team that I'm rooting for since the Miami Hurricanes suck. I am a temporary Arkansas fan for this year. And pretty much when you look at Arkansas going into that game against Texas A&M, you got to remember, Arkansas was a five and a half point underdog going into that game now there were a good amount of people who expected Arkansas to win that game because of the quarterback situation with Texas A&M with Zach Cazada taking over at the helm for Haynes King who is going through an injury right now but even if Haynes King was a starting QB I still felt like the outcome wouldn't have changed I still felt like Arkansas would have got the victory because you got to remember Haynes King wasn't really all that great when he was starting at QB for Texas Texas A&M this year it wasn't like he was lighting the world up on fire so when you look at the problems that Texas A&M had on the offensive line I really felt like the defensive line for Arkansas would be able to take advantage of that and I expected the game to pretty much be a low scoring affair and I almost got the final score right but Arkansas man this is a really good team man they're really good up front and the true test comes against Georgia this weekend because they're going to get pushed like they never have before, okay? Texas and them was just a good stepping stool, okay? Like, I look at this season so far for Arkansas as steps, okay? You had the first little test against Texas, okay? Now, Texas isn't as good as a Texas and them or a or, or they're not even good like a George, okay? But they're a solid program. I think that Texas is a top 25 team this year, okay? So you got one small little win against them, okay? Then you got tested against Texas a and which was another roadblock who a lot of people were saying that you weren't going to be able to overcome. You beat Texas a and Now your season is at its peak because the month of October for Arkansas is going to be really tough and you're going to end up going against one of the best teams in all of college football in Georgia. And I do believe that Arkansas has a legitimate shot to beat Georgia. And I do think that they can beat Georgia. I don't think that game is going to be a blowout simply for the fact that Arkansas has the best off the line in the SEC and What Georgia has done so well has pretty much been the fact that they can overpower everybody up front. So a lot of Georgia fans are going to say, well, Arkansas hasn't played Georgia. Well, you can say the same thing if you're an Arkansas fan. If you're a Georgia fan, you haven't played Arkansas. 
This Arkansas team is for real. And you can't continue to count out this Arkansas Razorback team. You can keep saying, oh, JT, they're just a good story. Like, this team is legit. And you got to be asking yourself the question, is this a team that could end up making it into the college football playoffs? Now, I do feel like Arkansas is going to have some slip-ups. But for right now, this team is really good, and this team matches up really well with Georgia. Not only when you look at their skill position, they have a really good group of wide receivers, but they also match up really well in the trenches, which is something that if you're going against an Alabama or Georgia or Ohio State or Clemson, you have to be able to handle your own up front. And that's what Arkansas can do. Now, when you look at K.J. Jefferson, he had a really good game against Texas A&M. What I was really impressed about was, you know, what he did through the air. Now, he didn't really have a lot of passing attempts in that game against Texas A&M. He only threw the ball 15 times, but he was really efficient. He was 7-15, 212 passing yards, two touchdowns. He also had 50 rushing yards, but he also had no picks. So, K.J. Jefferson, um... I would like to see just how good he is as a passer when he's asked to have to carry the game on his shoulders throwing the football. I want to see what he can do if he has to throw the ball 25 or 30 times in the game. And I think that we may have the answer to that question this weekend because I really feel like George is going to force KJ Jefferson to have to take over this game and have to beat them with his arm instead of his legs and also I think that Georgia is going to try to find a way to neutralize that Arkansas rushing attack so I really want to see just how good KJ Jefferson is when he's asked to throw the ball 25 to 30 times in a football game but when you look at him right now man like he's been really good I think he's been one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC this year and when you look at the Arkansas rushing attack as a whole they had a really good performance they had 197 rushing yards as a team Traylon Smith led the way with 17 attempts and 82 rushing yards. You also have to look at the fact that, you know, Texas a and wasn't really able to get much going on offense. They got outgained 443 um, total yards of offense to 272. Isaiah Spiller still got his. You know, he had a pretty good game. But overall, Texas a and got stifled by Arkansas's defense. And, like, when you look at Arkansas, man, this is a team that is incredibly well coached, and they're really good. So, I'm really excited for Arkansas. Everything that I've said so far, I've been saying it pretty much since the season started. Like, if you haven't bought into the Arkansas stock yet, you need to go ahead, sell whatever stock you had in Texas and them at LSU, and get in on Arkansas before it's too late because this team is peaking at the right moment. This team is really good, man. And a lot of people are now starting to take notice. But, you know, everybody's going to be watching to see what they do against Georgia. Okay, because everybody knew that Texas a and was kind of handicapped with what they could do on offense. But when you look at Georgia, Georgia pretty much is at full strength on both sides of the football, and they're going to get tested. But I really feel like Arkansas is going to be able to hang in there and make this a competitive football game. I don't think that Georgia is going to come on and they're just going to steamroll Arkansas like how they did Vanderbilt because Arkansas is really strong up front, literally. So if you aren't a believer in Arkansas football, you need to start believing because this team is for real, okay? This is the second best team in the SEC West. They proved it when they beat Texas A&M, LSU, don't really know how I feel about them right now. But for right now, Texas A&M behind Alabama is the second best team in the SEC West. And they're probably the third best team in the SEC overall. You look at Alabama, you got Georgia, who you're going to be playing this weekend. Like, I'm really high on Arkansas. I really am. This team right now is clicking on all cylinders. Sam Pittman right now is one of the best stories in all of college football. He looks like a surefire lock to be coach of the year this season. Like the turnaround for Arkansas has been really impressive. And that just goes to tell everybody, like you don't have to wait four or five years for a rebuild. All you have to do is get a roster where you have guys who can buy into what you're selling. Okay, in Arkansas, this locker room, this fan base, 
they're buying into Sam Pittman and this shows on the field because they play hard man like they look like they would run through a brick wall for Sam Pittman he has these guys playing as well as any other team in the nation trying to tell you guys man don't be surprised if Arkansas beats Georgia this weekend, because I'm trying to tell you guys, Arkansas right now looks to me as one of the best teams in all of college football right now. They're playing at a really high level, and I'm really excited for this Arkansas-Georgia matchup that we're going to get this upcoming Saturday. I cannot wait. So Clemson was defeated by NC State 21-27 to in overtime. And everybody is wondering what's wrong with Clemson. Is Clemson officially done? I had my guy, Juice Alert, who I was going back and forth with on Twitter. He was saying that Clemson's chances of being a dime still over. They're probably going to have more seasons like this. And this is all I have to say. I don't think Clemson is done. I just think that, you know, this is a season where Clemson isn't going to be in the national championship picture. Same thing with Ohio State. And listen, this is what I tell everybody. You can only reload so much until you just have to go ahead and get an entirely different clip. Okay, everybody when it comes to Ohio State, Clemson, Alabama, they know that you they lose talent to the NFL every single year. And they always say we don't rebuild, we reload. But every time you reload, you know, you don't really fully completely empty the entire clip. You know, you're just going to the side putting in two, three extra bullets. But eventually there comes a time where you don't have any more bullets left over. You just have to go ahead, buy some more ammo and get an entirely different clip. Sometimes you're not going to be in the college football national championship picture every single year. Like Alabama is a dynasty. We get that. But they haven't been in the championship picture every single year. There's been some years when Alabama has two losses and they're not in the college football playoffs. Now, that doesn't happen often, but it has happened. Sometimes, you know, you have to reload, but sometimes when you're reloading, it's not good enough to get you into the championship conversation. And when you look at Clemson, this was a team that had some issues. I wasn't really all that high on the off the line going in. And that wide receiver outside of Justin Ross, you don't really have a lot of proven production there. I mean, Justin Ross has played pretty good up to this point. I mean, he was their best wide receiver against NC State. He had eight receptions for 77 receiving yards and two touchdowns. But outside of him, you know, you kind of lack the talent needed right now at wide receiver. Not saying that they don't have the talent. You do have the five and four star guys. But all I'm saying is that that talent right now isn't really developed like how it should be. You don't have the talent at wide receiver this year that you have had in the past. So when you look at DJ Uyangale, he was 12 with 26, 111 passing yards, two touchdowns, interception. He also had a couple of rushing yards with 63 on the ground. But overall, you know, like I kind of think that Clemson doesn't have as great as a team around him this year, like how they had last year when he had to step in and replace a Trevor Lawrence when he was going through the COVID-19 issues and stuff. So when I look at DJ Uyangale, I do think he's a talented QB, okay? Everybody keeps saying Clemson was going to drop off eventually. You had Deshaun Watson, then you had Trevor Lawrence. Were you going to be able to continue that trend with DJ Uyangale? I don't really think DJ Uyangale is the problem I really think the team around him just really isn't all that great and you gotta remember I don't really think that Clemson was really as good as a team as a lot of people thought they were because every time Clemson was forced to play an opponent outside of the ACC they've kind of struggled you look at what happened earlier a couple of weeks ago when they faced Georgia they struggled you look what happened last year they struggled against Ohio State Justin Fields torched them in the semifinals so like Clemson hasn't really been all that competitive when they've been matched up against really great great opponents so I mean like I'm not really surprised that Clemson's having the struggles that they're having this season and you look at NC State a lot of people were really high on NC State coming into this year and some people out there felt like NC State could challenge Clemson because this defense that NC State has they get active and even Dabo Sweeney said it after the game he said that NC State's defense kind of looked like ours 
And then you look at how good their quarterback played. Like their quarterback, Devin Leary, was on fire. 32 of 44 for 238 pass yards and four touchdowns against a Brent Venables coach defense. Like he lit Clemson's defense on fire. So when I look at Clemson right now, man, like I just look at a football team that's still really good. It's just the fact that they're not as good as what a lot of people thought they were. And they're going against their, they're pretty much going against themselves. You know, they're going against their trials and tribulations trying to find themselves. You don't really have the run game going. You only had 101 rushing yards total as a team. And if you take away the 63 rushing yards that DJ Uyungle had, you're not really getting a lot of production from your running back. Like, I really feel like Clemson is trying to find their identity. They don't really know who they are. Last year, the year before that, we knew what this team was. We knew they had Trevor Lawrence. You had guys on the outside. You had Travis Etienne, who was your big playmaker. But you don't really have any of that this year. You're trying to get new faces incorporated into your offense. You're trying to find out what everybody's roles on the team are. And unfortunately for Clemson, you know, normally you don't really have that tough of a schedule. Normally you may get tested twice a year and probably later on in the season. But for Clemson, they're getting tested early. And the downfall of Clemson compared to the previous seasons, compared to this year's, the fact that, you know, they were able to find a way to escape anytime they got tested. That's what good teams do. They're able to find a way to win games some way, somehow. And for Clemson, they haven't really been able to do that. You know, they get in these tightly contested contests and it really feels like they're escaping. They nearly lost to Georgia Tech not too long ago. And we saw what Georgia Tech did this weekend. They pulled off a big upset against UNC. So when I look at Clemson, I still feel like this is a really good team. I still feel like this team is going to win 10 games. Maybe they'll win nine. But I still feel like this is a really good team. They're just not, you know, one of the best teams. Same thing with Ohio State. And I keep telling people, you know, like, you can only reload so much until you eventually have to empty the clip completely and you have to restart okay and when I look at Clemson that's what this program is doing right now they're kind of hitting the reset button they're refreshing you have a lot of new faces you lost a lot of guys to the NFL and a lot of good players who have walked out this program over the last couple of years so there's going to come a time when eventually you're just kind of going to have to refresh you get what I'm saying so I'm not saying that Clemson is rebuilding I'm just saying that, you know, this just isn't a season that you just retool and you find yourself right back in the championship picture. So for Clemson fans out there, you still have a really good team. But, you know, it's kind of hard to see just how good this team is going to be simply for the fact that you expect to be in the championship conversation every single year. Like Clemson has been ranked in the top five, top ten of the AP pool for like damn near three years. And now they're barely inside of the top 25. And I know it's really strange, but things like this happen. You are going to have seasons where you're just not going to be there. Okay? So, I mean, for Clemson fans, it pretty much seems like they've given up on the season. Which I understand. Clemson fans, no matter how well the season goes from this point forward, no matter if they win 10 games, win the ACC championship, and win a New Year's Six Bowl game or make it to a New Year's Six Bowl game, this season kind of is a L because at this point, if you're a Clemson fan, you expect to win championships. You expect to be competing for championships. You expect to be in the college football playoffs. And when you're not in the college football playoffs, the season kind of is looked at as a disappointment same thing for Alabama fans you know when they're not in the college football playoffs or they're not competing for a national championship the season kind of is viewed as a disappointment that's what happens when you have the expectations set so high when the expectations kind of become the standard you know for Clemson the standard every single year is to compete for a championship and when Clemson's not doing that Clemson fans kind of you know aren't engaged they're not happy because that's what you expect but you're not going to be able to compete for a championship every single year you're going to have some years when you have two losses and you're not able to get in that's what happens you know like in college football everybody talks about how dominant Alabama has been but everybody seems to forget that there's been some years when 
Alabama has lost two games and they weren't able to get in. Get what I'm saying? Alabama has had some down years. Now, the difference between a down year for Alabama, Ohio State, and the Clemson is that a down year for them is winning to 10 games and only having two losses and making it to a New Year's Six Bowl game or something like that. A down year for the majority of other programs is probably, you know, eight wins. You get what I'm saying? So for Clemson fans, you know, you kind of view this as a down year, but I just really feel like this is a year that Clemson really has taken to just completely refresh and reload. I don't think Clemson is done. I think it's just way too early. Like this is a season of college football that has a lot of resemblance to what, 2007, when we just saw upsets happening every single week. I think that's what this 2021 college football season is. We're just seeing a lot of upsets taking place. We're going to see a lot of teams at the end of this year that we're going to be like, damn, I didn't expect them to be this good. So when you look at Clemson, man, like I just think it's just one of those years where you're probably going to end up winning 10 games. You're going to make it to a New Year's Six Bowl game and you're going to end up figuring out who you are later in the season. But right now for Clemson, you know, normally early in the year, they kind of don't really play the best of competition and they can afford to struggle because eventually talent is going to be able to overcome that. But this year's Clemson's team they don't really have that talent. They don't really have the talent to be able to continue to escape and get by week after week. Eventually, it's going to catch up to them. And that's what happened this past weekend against NC State. They couldn't escape. They weren't as talented enough as a team to be able to narrowly escape. And eventually, there was going to, there was going to come a time where Clemson was going to end up slipping up. I thought it was going to happen against Georgia Tech. They were able to escape in that game. But it ended up happening against NC State. Clemson kept getting by and eventually it caught him in the leg. And for Clemson, you know, they're not one of the best teams because the best teams in college football, when they get in these close games, they find a way to will themselves into a victory. You look at what happened with Alabama the previous week when they played Florida. That game was extremely close. Alabama, some way, somehow, was still able to will themselves into a victory. You know, these great teams always find a way somehow, some way to bail themselves out and find a way to pick up a victory in a tough game. Clemson wasn't able to do that because they're not that talented. So when you look at Clemson, what's wrong with Clemson is simply for the fact that, you know, this is a team that lacks identity on offense. They don't really know who they are. They're still trying to figure out the roles of the players and how to best utilize the talent that they have on offense. So for Clemson, I don't think they're done. I just think that, you know, they're just going through one of those years. Alabama has been through one of these years. Ohio State has been through a couple of these years. Like sometimes you just go through one of those years like, you know, you're just not there when it comes to competing for a national championship, but you're still a pretty damn good program. You're still a pretty damn good football team. So when I look at Clemson, I still think that this is a pretty damn good football team. This is just a team that just isn't going to be there when it comes to a national championship discussion. And that's why a lot of people are going to view this as a down year for Clemson because people expect Clemson to compete for a championship year in and year out. But, you know, sometimes when you go on the run, you're going to end up eventually the car is going to stop working. You know, you can't drive the same car forever. When you look at Clemson and you look at Alabama, and you look at Ohio State, everybody talks about how dominant these programs have been. But eventually every program has a season where they kind of, you know, they kind of drop a little bit. And that's what I think Clemson's going through right now. And for Clemson fans, you're probably upset because you expect this team to be competing for championships every single year. But in all reality, you know, you're going to have some years where you have two losses. You win 10 games, you win the ACC Conference Championship, but you just don't get in. Simply for the fact that, you know, the team just wasn't really all that great. There's some years like that. Alabama had a couple of years like this. You get what I'm saying? Ohio State is currently having one of those years. You know, everybody talks about, you know, how the college football playoffs needs to be expanded because, you know, we are tired of seeing the same teams in Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State. But people fail to realize that, you know, you have to be able to capitalize when a program like Clemson, Ohio State is having a down year. I'm just saying 
I think Clemson still is a really good program. I think this program still is going to be in a national championship conversation for years to come. They're just having one of those years where they're retooling. But even though they're retooling, they don't have enough talent this year. And when you look at Clemson, you know, I think another team that has theirs coming is Oklahoma. So when I talked about Clemson, I talked about the best teams in college football. They're able to will themselves into victories. Okay. And close games. But eventually, sometimes you end up being in so many close games that eventually it catches up to you. And with Clemson. They were in so many tightly contested games. Like we saw what happened against Georgia Tech. They were able to escape. But eventually there's going to come a time when eventually you're not going to be able to escape. You're going to end up finding a way to lose. And I think that day is coming for Oklahoma. Clemson had their day of reckoning. Ohio State had their day of reckoning against Oregon. And I think Oklahoma has theirs coming. Now, I don't know when, but I know it's coming for Oklahoma because they barely got by for West Virginia. And I know everybody's going to say a win is a win, but sometimes a win isn't a great win. And when you look at Oklahoma, it looks like they're barely making it by. Like, they're limping out of these games. Same thing with Clemson. Like, Clemson is limping. They look like a wounded animal. You know, Oklahoma right now is prey. They're limping to the finish line. It is only a matter of time before somebody comes in and they finish off Oklahoma. The offense doesn't look good. Spencer Rattler doesn't look all that good. So is Oklahoma overrated? I don't think Oklahoma's overrated. I really feel like the overrated, you know, label that people try to throw on teams. It's just simply them being wrong about a certain team. I don't really feel like Oklahoma is overrated. I just feel like a lot of people had a lot of high expectations and, you know, they kind of overestimated how good this Oklahoma team was. And I wasn't really sold on Oklahoma going into this year. I had questions about Spencer Rattler. I had questions about this Oklahoma run game. But, you know, everybody's just so quick to say, oh, yeah, national championship. Everybody was so quick to label Oklahoma the second best team in college football. And again, that people just got too caught up in their own expectations. And what happens is when people have these high expectations that aren't being met, they end up going on and saying that, oh, this team is overrated. Oklahoma wasn't overrated. You just, you know, were wrong about Oklahoma and your evaluation. You thought that Oklahoma was better than what they actually are. And even though Oklahoma is 4-0, I'm going to tell you guys right now that Oklahoma is going to end up losing at least two games this year. I already made a bet with somebody that Oklahoma would not make it into the college football playoffs. You look at Spencer Rattler, man, like, I've been telling people this about Spencer Rattler for the longest. Spencer Rattler is... Uh, unorthodox quarterback. He's similar to Patrick Mahomes. Like, we're seeing a lot of these new quarterbacks enter college football now, and they play a lot of backyard football. They're not fundamentally sound. You know, a lot of things they do is unorthodox. And Spencer Rattler has a very unorthodox playing style. And you know, it's a good thing in the positive, because when plays break down, he's going to try to make a play, and it's either going to work out for him, or it's going to cost him and bite him in the leg. And for Spencer Rattler, he ends up being over aggressive at times. He tries to make plays instead of just taking what the defense gives him. Like, I really think for Spencer Rattler, you know, there was a time during the West Virginia game this past weekend when Oklahoma Sooner fans were calling for him to be benched. They were chanting the name of the backup quarterback behind Spencer Rattler. And, you know, when you look at Spencer Rattler, man, like, I think he has to be benched. And I think it's going to come a time when he's going to end up getting benched. And then he ends up getting inserted back into the game or he ends up starting the following week. He ends up performing very well. We saw that happen last year with Spencer Rattler when Lincoln Riley ended up benching him in the middle of the game. Then he put him back in the game. And from that point forward, Spencer Rattler played well for the rest of the season. I really feel like that's going to end up happening for Spencer Rattler at some point this season. And there's been a lot of Oklahoma Sooner fans who have already previously said before the season that Spencer Rattler still is a work in progress. But, you know, everybody just get so caught up in the hype that what happened last year like last year is last year you got to focus on this year 
So for Oklahoma fans, you're not surprised that Spencer Rattler is struggling because there are a lot of Oklahoma fans that are telling me before this season began that, hey, JT, you know, Spencer Rattler isn't as good as what a lot of people are making it out to be. And even I was a little bit shocked. You know, I was like, okay, I got to wait and see. But now I'm starting to understand. But, you know, when it comes to Spencer Rattler, you know, he does have all of the talent in the world. But sometimes when you're super talented, instead of trying to take what the defense gives, you just overly rely on your talent too much. And you're probably saying, JT, how do you overly rely on talent? Well, sometimes when you overly rely on talent, you get too cocky. And when you get too cocky, you try to force passes that you have no business throwing. You try to throw a pass into triple coverage just because you just overly rely on your talent. Sometimes you just have to just take what the defense gives you. Sometimes you just have to go ahead and take that two yard check down. It may not be the flashiest play, it may not pick up a lot of yards, but it's better taking those plays and still, you know, keeping the drive alive than just trying to throw everything into one basket with trying to get the big flashy plays. And that's what I feel is the problem with Spencer Rattler. Like he just plays super unorthodox. His fundamentals are kind of off. And it's nothing wrong with that you can be very successful, but sometimes you have to know when to be aggressive and when to try to make a play. And sometimes you have to be able to know when to let a play die and live for another down. And that's the problem that I'm noticing with Spencer Rattler. You know, the talent's there. The skill set's there. I just feel like Spencer Rattler is one of those quarterbacks like he just feels like he has to try to do it all. And Oklahoma's defense won them that game against West Virginia. You don't normally think about that, but I really feel like Oklahoma's defense has bailed this team out a lot of times. And you don't really think of that when you think of Oklahoma, you think about offense, you think about their defense allowing 40 points, but this defense for Oklahoma has actually been really solid this year. And this defense is bailing them out. But I think Oklahoma right now, they're a wounded animal. They're a gazelle. And they're going to run into a lion that's going to end up finishing this team off. Like, they're 4-0 right now, but I promise you, by the end of this season, they're probably going to have two losses. Now, I don't know where those losses are going to come from. I'm not saying they're going to lose to Kansas State. All I'm saying is that, like what happened with Clemson, Clemson was finding ways to win games. But they were really ugly. They were in wounded animal mode. And I said earlier that the best teams in college football find a way to will themselves to a victory. But also at the same time, you don't see them barely making it by week after week like we saw with Clemson. It was only a matter of time before somebody came in there and chopped their head off. And for Oklahoma right now, they're limping. They're like a limping cat limping across the road. You know, they haven't got hit by a car yet, but it's coming. And the day of reckoning for Oklahoma, I think it's coming sooner rather than later. Because this team right now kind of looks out of sorts, at least from an offensive standpoint. The offensive line is having some issues. Spencer Rattler is having some issues. I don't feel like the play calling for Lincoln Riley has really been all that great year all that great this year also and I know it sounds crazy to say but I don't really feel like Lincoln Riley is maximizing the current personnel that he has on his team right now so I just feel like there's a lot of things going on with Oklahoma and sometimes you need a reality check and I think a reality check is coming quickly for Oklahoma faster than what you guys expect but you guys let me know do you guys feel like Oklahoma is overrated because like when people say Oh, uh, he, this player is overrated or he's overrated. Like, I really feel like, no, nah, like I just, and I had to learn this from experience. Like anytime I used to say a team is going to be this good and they end up failing to meet my expectations, I end up calling them overrated. And then over the years I learned, you know, this team wasn't overrated. I just was wrong about this team. And for Oklahoma, you know, a lot of people were wrong about Oklahoma. But, you know, a lot of people don't like to be wrong. So they just tried to use the excuse of, oh, this team was overrated. Like, they weren't overrated. You just didn't properly evaluate this team. You know, a lot of people in life are quick to hop on the train before they know where the destination is. For Oklahoma, everybody was quick to hop on the train and they didn't know where this team was headed. Everybody kind of, you know, was hype, was reading the magazines, you know, these preseason magazines, you know, they always gas up everybody and things like that. You know, they always 
are overly optimistic about every single team, but a lot of people are quick to overlook the flaws that certain teams have, you know, at the start of the season. And everybody's just so quick to hop on the train without knowing where they were headed. So when you look at Oklahoma, they, they're not overrated. It's just that a lot of people evaluated this team wrong and they were wrong in their evaluation. And every time somebody's wrong in their evaluation, they always try to save themselves instead of accepting and saying, hey, man, I was wrong about this team. They just tried to take the easy way out and say, yeah, man, this team was overrated. I wasn't wrong. They're just overrated. Like, no, nah, you were wrong. You evaluated the team wrong. This team isn't overrated. You know, you just thought that this team was better than the level that they're playing as right now. So when I look at Oklahoma, you know, I don't think this team's overrated. I just think that there were a lot of people who are wrong in how good they felt this team was. So you guys let me know down in the comment section down below how you guys feel about Oklahoma. Do you guys feel like Oklahoma is going to end up finishing this season out undefeated? Or do you feel like they're going to end up losing at least one or two games this year? Let me know down in the comment section down below. And I appreciate you guys for listening to this episode of the JT Sports Podcast. I'll be back shortly with my week five college football predictions. There are a lot of good games. You have Georgia or Arkansas. You have Ole Miss, Alabama. You have UCLA, Arizona State. Like There are a lot of good games this weekend. And normally I only preview four games, but I'm probably going to end up previewing, you know, six or seven because there are a lot of intriguing matchups that I'm excited to talk about this week in college football. But I appreciate you guys for listening to this episode of the JT Sports Podcast. If you enjoyed, make sure that you go ahead and share this podcast on your social media platforms with your friends, family, acquaintances. Make sure that you go ahead and leave a five-star review. And I'll see you guys with another episode shortly.